We have the AFC Championship game. Patriots and the Broncos. Sheriff taking yeah, the yeah. title. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've said this like a little, a little behind the scenes. This is our third attempt at recording this episode due to technical difficulties. Yep. And so we've repeated the same shit twice already and we're here on the third time. So he's like, the Sheriff. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> But, yeah, the Sheriff into the game went up to Belichick and he was he was saying this might be my last rodeo um it's been a pleasure which is the first time we've really heard him even admit remotely that he actually is thinking about probably retiring yeah yeah so that's a I mean obviously he wasn't saying that to the public but he you know it went public so I think it went public on accident too I don't think he was expecting no, probably not. You know, that they caught some audio of him saying... Because as much as they caught the audio of him saying that to Belichick, what right. they didn't catch is what Belichick said to Peyton. They caught, like, part of it. I remember listening to it. I mean, it was just like, oh, it's, it's whatever. It just, like, you know, good sportsmanship, whatever. Yeah. Well, it, it didn't really stand out. And especially going on good sportsmanship, too. Is Belichick isn't the type of guy where he'll go out of his way to go talk to a quarterback after a game. I don't think he's ever gone out of his way to talk to you know Manning. Pri- I yeah, could be wrong. I, I could be wrong, but it's but yeah, it's very unlikely. Quiet and to himself, kind of. Yeah, it's usually he goes shakes the coach's hand, goes straight to the locker room. No like you know talking to anybody, and he made a point to go shake right. you know Peyton's hand. Right. And, so well, that was kind of cool. All these years and all those games they've had, you know, there's got to be just a mutual level of respect. Obviously, like the rivalry between the Patriots and like Manning is obviously nothing but like respect. You yeah, know? it's not like uh, <laughs> it's not like Conor McGregor talking shit to people, pissing them off type. Yeah, rivalry, you know what I mean. Like it's all it's all class. All well, I guess Brady and Manning like hang out with each other during the off season so there is like no really between those two there is no really uh struggle or any type right. of rivalry they're just kind of like we're just on our teams and we're trying it's to get to the same goal professional rivalry yeah, yeah yeah so the game itself right uh the first play that comes to my mind is the pass that wasn't that actually was a lateral yeah so it was a fumble, I guess, instead of an incompletion. And uh, <laughs> it's it's like Harris should have made a play on the ball. He didn't keep playing. That's what they always tell you to play to the whistle for, right? Yeah. Play to the whistle. Yeah. It, it's funny because, it, first of all, unlike maybe some other calls that happened in that game that were lousy calls, that actually was yeah. a good call. And, I mean, it was it the was. correct it call right. on the ruling right and what's kind of funny is that uh now i can't remember uh who on the patriots picked up the ball but he ran all the way to the end zone right, and right. It, it didn't get touched right. so technically like they could have just given them the touchdown right then and there but then like to make it fair since there was like confusion on the well, field they blew the whistle before he got to the touchdown like, yeah before he got in the end zone, so the play technically was dead, even if it shouldn't have been. Yeah. But yeah. I it, mean, it they ended up touchdown ultimately. Yeah, which, ultimately they got in the end zone regardless. Which is what made the game winnable. Yeah. That that play basically. Yeah. Made it close because otherwise it wouldn't have been a really a close game. No. So. The only other time they actually got into the end zone was at the very end. Right. So think about it. If. If they're a touchdown back, like two touchdowns back, they probably don't even get that touchdown because what's the motivation to go for it in the last minute? You yeah. Know? It's like, it, it just seems less likely to have been a close game. Yeah. But they did get it, and then uh, the next play that really comes to mind is the missed kick. The missed extra, extra point. point. Yeah. Goskowski, Goskowski had a, was it 10 years, I think they said? Since he had missed an extra point. Yeah. He was one of the few kickers. There was only like five kickers, I think they said, that didn't miss anything the whole season. 
Yeah. <laughs> and it ended it like the worst possible time. Well, yeah. and it's uh, I actually texted you. Yeah, you w- did. When uh, that happened, I'm like, that's probably gonna determine the game right there, and it yeah. d- and it did. <laughs> yeah. Like, ultimately. Because like, after the game ended, I'm like, wow, you were right. Like you called it. Because you were like, that's uh, that could potentially be the the difference in it. I mean, it was a two-score game. I mean, two-point game, but that's because they had to go for the two-point conversion because he missed that kick. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, if they didn't have to go for the two-point conversion, right? it would have been a tie game. That's not necessarily to say that the Patriots would have won in overtime, but it would have right. definitely made for a chance to win it, I guess. Right. Uh, so, I guess the criticism the Patriots are getting... Yeah, is going on it on fourth down a couple times, and uh, one of them that they didn't get was like they're pretty deep. They could have got a field goal, and then they would have been going for the win at the end of the game. Yeah, so that kind of that kind of changed the game too, you know. Yeah, and and that is the criticism. Uh, I mean, it's funny because when they're going for it during the game. Everyone's going yeah. like, yeah, yeah, go for it. You gotta go for the win. You're in, you know, right. this is the AFC Championship. Go for the win, and so they're being like encouraged, you know, to go for it. Right. But you know, when everything's said and done, it's so much easier to be like, man, they're so stupid. If you would have kicked the field goal, the final score would have been twenty-one to twenty, and they could have won it. But right. you know, it, it's hard in those kind of things. Like I, I kind of understand Belichick's thinking on it. I, I would have the same mentality. It's just like, no, we're here. You gotta go in the end zone. You know, we're not gonna settle yeah. for field goals. Well, because... I, I agree. Like in the uh, hindsight, twenty twenty, right? You know, yeah. that after the game ended. But in the course of the game, think about it. They haven't made it to the end zone one time, like legitimately. They got it on a turnover. Yeah. It was one of the flukiest turnovers I've ever seen. And so that's the only time they've gotten in the end zone. Who it was actually we failed to mention Stephen Jackson, who you know wasn't even playing during the regular season, <laughs> got that touchdown. But <laughs> so he's thinking, all right, we're right here. This is maybe our last chance of getting a touchdown. Really, realistically, you know, that was the closest they had gotten in the whole game. Yeah. Uh, since that since that touchdown, so he's thinking, all right, we have to go for it. Because a field goal is not going to be enough. So I'm going to put I some. Mean, I get it. I, I get why he went for it. Like I'm gonna, I'm one of the harshest critics on the Patriots, right? Like <laughs> as soon as it's time to blast them, I'll fucking blast them. But I think it was a good call. I mean, it made sense. It, it did make sense at the time. It, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some criticism on the Broncos. I mean, they came out with a win, and so it yeah. happened. And people are probably going to argue with me. It's like, well, why would you criticize him for this? But I am going to is because so Broncos had the ball. I think there was like two minutes, 30 seconds left. And it got down to like uh, third down. And then they ran the ball to try to run out the clock. So they didn't convert the third down. So it's like fourth and three or fourth and four, something like that. And uh, so two minute warning hasn't happened yet. Patriots had two timeouts left, I think, at the time. And yeah. they were past uh, the 50-yard line. So, like, even if, like, they ended up punting the ball. But, like, I thought they should have just went for it because I'm like, okay, so if you don't convert, they're still, you know, don't they have good field position but not, like, amazing field position. Right, right. But... At the same time, yeah, Patriots had two timeouts, but they also had the two-minute warning, which is basically a third timeout for them anyway. So I'm like, right. you're going to give Tom Brady the ball, you know, with two timeouts and a two-minute warning call, you know, to try to win the game at the very end? Right. I was just like, or, no, I guess he, all I could do is tie it. But still, I'm like... He, he, he almost did it. Exactly, and that, and like when they were driving it downfield, I was just like, "This is that's why I was getting like kind of critical on the Broncos." I'm like, "This is the worst idea." And like, and I, I understand why they did. It's like, "Oh, let's just rely on their defense." Because as you right. were saying, besides that one turnover, they never reached the end zone, and and their defense was doing a phenomenal job against Tom Brady. But you're giving it to Tom Brady, 
under two minutes, like that's the worst person you want to give the, the ball. Best quarterback <laughs> in the league. Like, I, if you, we can argue about whether he's the best and all that, but as far as clutch goes, he's the clutchest quarterback in the league. Yeah. I like, mean, it, not even though, in the not in the like in the history of the NFL, he's like yeah. the best. He's the worst possible quarterback you want to give right. the ball to under two minutes. Yeah, I mean. The only other one that's even close, in my opinion, is probably Breeze. But, like, Tom Brady, <laughs> he does it all the time. He did it a bunch last year. It's like, there's two minutes or less left. Don't give him the ball back. Yeah. You know, like, shit. And then he did it. He got the touchdown. Yeah. And, and on a, after, like, it was two fourth down conversions. Because the touchdown, he got a fourth down conversion, like, about midfield. Yeah. And then the touchdown was a fourth down conversion. Yeah. And then <laughs> he ended his pass got tipped and he got intercepted. It was one of the craziest finishes I've ever seen. But I agree with you. They could have just they got that field that field position they gave up like on the punt or whatever. They pretty much got back on the punt return. Yeah. Yeah, so that too. They, they had it almost all of it. Like two plays later, they were like back where they would have been anyway. Yeah. So it was ridiculous. They did that a couple times. Uh, this is a little a side note, but because I, I guess this is the only place to really mention it because you, you want to talk about not giving Brady the ball back. There's been a lot of criticism, and we did it too with the, the Chiefs clock management against the Patriots. Uh huh. Maybe that's why Andy Reid just didn't call a timeout because he figured, well, shit, we don't want to give any time to Tom Brady if he does get the ball back. So. Oh, you're saying... Reed yeah, just like, going like if we go down and score that yeah that yeah. there's no way that we're even going to give Brady even a chance to come and try right. to yeah maybe that was the strategy I don't know but it kind of makes sense it does it makes more sense than looking at it from the way that they're retarded <laughs> you know like <laughs> and I don't even mean that like derisively but like literally like that was some bad play calling otherwise but yeah um, good game, crazy finish. Well, Broncos going. I don't know what else you got. Anything else? Yeah, a, a couple short things. Uh, okay. you, you talked about the two fourth down conversions at that last drive with the Patriots, both of them to Gronk, and right. and which right. is crazy because honestly, the Broncos were doing a great job stopping Gronk all game. Yeah. And it, well, I shouldn't say all game. First half, they shut down Gronk completely right. and then he ended up with like a touchdown and 144 <laughs> yards still <laughs> when and then like the first half i think he only had like 23 yards receiving so he had like 120 yards receiving the second half it. alone so whatever they changed in their you know their strategy in the second right. half they right. did not work out in, for right. their favor against Gronk. but then also first half Peyton Manning had a phenomenal first half. He had two touchdowns to Owen Daniels, which is a little bit why I'm sporting my Wisconsin Badger jersey. <laughs> you okay. know, got okay. you know Owen Daniels, our tight I end from. Known you wanted to mention that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Owen Daniels, the tight end from the Badgers, getting two touchdowns, and which is even more funny because they tried to replace him with uh, Vernon Davis. They did. Yeah, they did. and then. Uh, it's just kind of funny that, like, you know, he's the one who's getting their... T I think he got all their touchdowns, right? Or didn't... Uh... No, they had... Yeah, no, it was 20 to... They, they only had two. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. the two touchdowns yeah. they had were both the uh, Owen Daniels, which is the yeah. guy that they almost wanted to get rid of, or get, replace at least. Right. So, I don't know, I just thought that was... It was cool. It was well, fun Vernon for me to Davis watch. Can't get the pass to save his life anymore. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway. Peyton, he definitely had a great first half. Uh, yeah, he did. He did, and then he just didn't fuck up in the second half. Right. Basically. Yeah. yeah. And they they rely on their defense, which for the most part did a great job until that final drive. And yeah. It well, that uh, the two point conversion they shut down beautifully. On they defense, did. They did. and then they also kind of got lucky. Maybe not luck, but they they made sure that they didn't get the onside kick, which right, was basically right. that was game over. Yeah, that, that could have changed 
They could have made it interesting at least. Yeah. If they didn't get that, but yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. Uh, that's all I really got, man. Okay. Was, was good those... game. It was kind of a classic. It was. was classic. It, you know, if if this is the last time that Manning and Brady face off, <laughs> then it was, yeah, it was a hell of a finish. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I mean, it literally came down to the wire, uh, uh, you know, with it, which was pretty cool. And then on top of that, you know, Peyton. Well, I. Peyton's defense, uh, right. you know, held him up top like one last time. So yeah. it was kind of cool. Yeah. He threw more touchdowns than Brady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did. So. <laughs> yeah, and he has, uh, I think, the all time, I forget the all time record. Is it 11 and 6, maybe? That sounds about right. So Brady's got the overall record, but uh, postseason, it's it's 3 2 in Manning's favor now. Yeah. So that kind of throws a little wrench into the, ba- the the who's better debate, especially if Manning wins a ring this year. Yeah, actually going on stats too. Yeah. Um, after this game, Tom Brady is only two for eight in Denver. Like yeah. apparently something about Colorado is his kryptonite because <laughs> he does not play well there whatsoever. And then uh, the other thing is he was hit 23 times that game. Dude, that's actually the one thing we didn't mention kind of maybe close this out. I've never seen Tom Brady pressured that much in one game. Yeah. Like, it was constant, constant pressure. Yeah. I think that Denver might have a better – if they're better than Carolina looking forward in any way, that, that front seven, man, is – I think that's the best front seven in football. Not even any disrespect to, to Carolina because I know they have, like – Josh Norman and Luke Keekley, but I just think as a whole that the front seven on Denver is, is just a little bit better than Carolina. So we'll find out. Yeah, yeah. But and then we, we can talk they, about they that more. Like the best front seven in football in that game. We can really break that down. We'll talk about it more when we talk sure. about our Super Bowl sure. picks. So. Sure. Okay. Good game, though. Good game. So make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, sorry for the our fucking technical difficulties that we're having this entire run, but hey, at least we're going to put out a video. Hey, look at that high-def camera I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a high-def camera and mine's just being fucking choppy as shit. Oh, well. Oh, well. And then, uh, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, and watch Late Call, and we'll be coming back uh, next week for